A few months back, we unboxed and reviewed the Dell XPS 12. It was Dell's consumer offering to compete with the Surface Pro 4. We liked it, but there were certain shortcomings on that device, namely poor battery life. Well, we have their business offering in-house today. It's the Dell Latitude 12. Let's find out if it's a king of the two-in-ones. Let's find out if it's a buy or a don't buy. About five or six months ago, we unboxed and reviewed the Dell XPS 12, a consumer two-in-one released by Dell. Here is their business class alternative, the Dell Latitude 12, a two-in-one aimed at the business sector. What you get under the hood is a Core M7 Skylake processor, Intel HD Graphics 515, 8 gigabytes of RAM, and 256 gigs of SSD storage. It weighs only 1.61 pounds, is only 0.32 inches thick. It's thin, light, and very nice looking, very businesslike, and very elegant at the same time. It comes in at only $650 as it has had a significant price decrease in the last few months or so. I'll put the link below to where you can find out more information and where you can purchase it. If you shop around, you can probably get it even cheaper. You could even get it as a refurbished unit with a warranty from Dell. Something to consider if you're a consumer or a business class customer. The star of the show is its display with a 12.5 inch UHD 4K display with a resolution of 3840 by 2160. It gets very bright at 377 nits. It's got good color representation, good color saturation, excellent viewing angles, and in one word to describe this display, it is simply stunning. It's one of the best displays you'll find in any device out there right now. As far as ports are concerned, here's what you get with the Dell Latitude 12. You get a power button located over here. And since this is a business focused device, you get a Kensington lock port over here. Moving to the other side, you find your volume rocker up and down. And here's where you find your micro SD card slot for storage expansion. Business users and consumers alike will both like the fact that there is an option for built-in LTE under the Verizon or AT&T 4G networks. Nice touch. And here you have two USB 3.0 Type-C ports. It's where you'll charge your device in either one of the ports and they are Thunderbolt 3 supported. So therefore you can drive a monitor through either one of those ports. And here you'll find your 3.5 millimeter microphone headphone jack. As far as keyboard options, there are two. One comes in the box, which is what you see here. It's the Dell Slim Keyboard. It has 1.3 millimeters of key travel, has three-stage backlighting, and has only one fixed position. Of the two keyboard options, it does give you the most desktop-like experience. The other keyboard option is the folio-style keyboard case. It's more akin to a surface-like type cover. It has 1.1 millimeters of key travel. It also has three stages of backlighting, but unlike the slim keyboard, it has an infinite kickstand, more like the Surface Pro 4. Even though it has 1.1 millimeters of key travel, overall we like the Folio keyboard better than the Slim keyboard. It just had a better mobile feeling, better overall usage, and had more options with its infinite kickstand. So I would choose to get that as an accessory option. And speaking of the kickstand, it is very Surface-like, like you find in the Surface 3 and the Surface Pro 4, and it goes down as far as you see here. It really is the better of the two keyboards, in my honest opinion. As far as the trackpad is concerned, each keyboard option sports a 4x2 smooth surface trackpad. Two finger scrolling worked well and Windows 10 gestures worked as advertised. So overall good job Dell on the execution of the trackpad on both the slim keyboard and the folio keyboard. And the folio keyboard also has a pen loop where you'll store the Dell Active Pen. Yes, the Dell Active Pen is supported on the Dell Latitude 12, just like its cousin, the Dell XPS 12. The Dell Active Pen has 2048 levels of pressure sensitivity, uses the Wacom technology, and comes in at around $50. I'll put the link below to where you can find it. The Dell Active Pen connects via Bluetooth and you get added functionality when you download Dell's Active Pen software. Dell's Active Pen can also activate OneNote when you hit the button on the top of the pen.
One note worked perfectly, palm rejection worked flawlessly, pressure sensitivity was spot on. Overall, I was very impressed with this pen in both the XPS 12 and on its business class cousin, the Dell Latitude 12. There is customization options through the Dell Active software as you see here. You can change what the buttons do and you can change the level of pressure sensitivity. Nice customization options here with the Dell Active Pen. I really like that very much. As far as performance is concerned, the Core M7 performed as we would expect. It's a Skylake processor. On the Geekbench 4.0 test, it did a 2806 on the single core score and a 4599 on the multi-core score. Its built-in HD Graphics 515 did a 12496 on the API test that Geekbench performed. As far as the SSD is concerned, it uses a Samsung M2 SATA drive. It's an SSD that performed pretty well. Under the Crystal Disk Mark scores, it did a 538.4 on the read and a 299.1 on the write. It did a 19.21 on the read in 4K and did an 86.73 on the 4K write. On the Octane 2.0 score, it did a 22,567, which was pretty good. On the 3D Mark Fire Strike score, it did 545, well below the ultra portable average of 645 and well below the Surface Pro 4's 840 score. As far as battery life is concerned, we were very disappointed. In fact, it's the Achilles heel of this device. At around 50% screen brightness, doing YouTube, Chrome, and light gaming, it conked out at around 5 hours and 19 minutes. A very disappointing figure indeed. Consider that other devices in the ultra portable category did much better. Even the Surface Pro 4, which did 6 hours and 5 minutes, a very disappointing score in that in itself, did better than this device. The Spectre X2 by HP, 6.5 hours, and the ThinkPad X1 Yoga did 8 hours and 38 minutes. All better than the Dell Latitude 12. Overall, I'm very disappointed in the battery life on the Dell Latitude 12. Photos from the Latitude 12's front and rear cameras were a mixed bag. In the front, the 2560 by 1440 camera struggled with focus, which resulted in a selfie that looked soft and fuzzy, even with face detection turned on. The rear 5.75 megapixel camera fared much better. Even though its photos came out a little grainy, the pictures looked sharper and better exposed. Aside from a slight bluish color shift, photos were much more pleasing. The Dell Latitude 12 has two front firing speakers and in order to test the sound, let's take a look and a listen at our latest video and we will run it in 4K to demonstrate the 4K UHD display of the Dell Latitude 12. Take a look and a listen. For about six months now since we've unboxed it and reviewed it back in February and I wanted to give you a report of how well it's been doing since. Hi, my name's Andrew and welcome to our second installment of our new series, Is It Still Worth It?, where we take a look back at technologies, gadgets, and devices released over the past year or so, see how well it's held up over time, to see how relevant it is today, and more importantly, if there's been any significant price drop. So let's take a look at the HP Spectre X2, see how well it's held up over time, to see if it's still a buy or a don't buy. The speakers were good, as you heard, the mids were pretty okay, and the volume got pretty loud. Overall, I'd say they did a decent job on the speakers, although it did sound a little bit muffled when you did go up to 100% volume. Overall, not a bad job, decent speakers on the Dell Latitude 12. So overall, is the Dell Latitude 12 a buy or a don't buy? Is it too much like its consumer cousin, the Dell XPS 12? Does it have enough business features for the business person to want to pick this up? I'm going to have to say it's a buy, although there are some caveats. The big one being that this has poor battery life. If you have to have all day battery life, there are other devices out there you should consider. But if you don't mind plugging in around midday, then you might want to pick this up because it has a stunning 4K UHD display, which is one of the best in the business right now. And it also has that optional excellent folio keyboard that is one of the best two-in-one type covers in the market, even better than the Surface Pro 4's type cover, in my opinion. And one more thing to keep in mind, it has a new low price. You can pick this up for anywhere from $600 to $700, depending on the configuration, and that is a very big, steep discount from its initial release price. 
Couple that with the stunning 4K UHD display, this may just be a buy after all. But keep in mind, poor battery life may hold you back. That's up for you to decide. So what do you think about the Dell Latitude 12? Is it something you might consider, whether you're a business person or just a regular consumer? Is it something you might consider with its uh, significant price drop since its initial release? That's one of the reasons why I wanted to spotlight this and review this device, because it makes it for a very intriguing choice. At a 4K screen and excellent build construction, it may be worthwhile for your consideration. I'm curious to know what you think, so please leave a comment in the comment section below. Let me know. I am curious to see if this is something you might want to pick up. Coming soon to AMD Tech is the unboxing and review of the Chewy HiBook Pro. That's the 10-inch 2-in-1 from China that has the high-res screen. In fact, it has a high-res screen of 2560 by 1600, extremely high-res. And it comes in at a 199 price point, even better. So stay tuned for the unboxing and review coming later this week. Also coming very soon to AMD Tech is our third installment of our series, Is It Still Worth It?, where we take a look back at the gadgets and technology released over the past year or so, see how well it's held up over time to see if it's still relevant today. And more importantly, has there been a significant price drop? Next up in our series is the Surface Book from Microsoft. Let's see if that proof and concept device, high-end premium, device lives up to the hype has it performed well since we unboxed it and reviewed it seven or eight months ago stay tuned for that coming very soon in our new series is it still worth it also coming very soon to amd tech is a unboxing and review of the huawei honor 8 it's a mid-level flagship perhaps device coming in at a 399 price point glass and metal design and some really interesting specs so stay tuned for that coming very soon to AMD Tech. I look forward to unboxing and reviewing that and bringing that to you very soon. So please hit the like button, please subscribe, please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device out there you think I should review. I will do my best to try to make that happen. So until next time, this is Andrew from AMD Tech. See ya.